I study uh, this field called quantum physics, which is one of the most fundamental theories that we have about physical reality. So my background is in, in quantum computing, which is a theory that was proposed a while ago to use the effects of quantum theory to power computing machines. Quantum computers have become more or less a mainstream thing. So theoretical physicists like me are interested in looking at what's ahead of that. And out of this field of quantum computing came a number of new proposals to take uh, the laws of physics forward from, from that where they are now. And one of them is this thing called constructor theory, which is the, um, the theory that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, and uh, broadly speaking, this is a, a new mode of explanation to um, understand physical reality in a way that's deeper and broader than uh, what physics has done so far. The deepest question is whether it's possible to find a more fundamental mode of explanation for physical reality than the one we already have. Currently, the best you can do if you're a theoretical physicist is usually to find a dynamical law that can be applied to the whole universe and given the initial conditions of the universe can let you know what the universe will do at some point in the future or in the past. This is a very powerful scheme, so it's been around since uh, you know, Galileo's and, and Newton's times. But it does not capture some aspects of physical reality that are very important. They require an explanation, uh, they exist out there, uh, but they can't quite be fit into this mold. And one of these things is information. So the, the traditional way of explaining physics um, can talk about information in, in ways that are approximative and not very exact we can't quite capture the, the laws that underlie uh, information itself. So I think this was one of the, 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 the key um, motives behind the, you know, proposing uh, constructor theory. The most important part of physical theory is in what it forbids. A universe where everything is allowed is not as interesting as one where only some things are allowed and other are not. The reason why that is, is that as soon as you say that something isn't allowed or is, is impossible, um, then uh, there is an explanation that comes uh, with that. And um, this explanation is, is laden with significance. It has a lot of insight in, into physical reality. There are a number of examples that you can think of. One is a law like first law of thermodynamics that says that energy has to be conserved, okay? And this law says that something is impossible, meaning a perpetual motion machine is impossible. And it has a very powerful, very wide reach because just by stating that, without actually working out trajectories of atoms or specific particles, uh, you can rule out a whole uh, a set of phenomena uh, just because if they existed, they would permit a, a, a machine of that kind, which is not allowed. And so this is the same logic that is behind, behind constructive theories, um, laws and, and uh, principles. So constructive theory, instead of using dynamical laws and trajectories and initial conditions, takes statements about what tasks or transformations are possible and what are impossible and why as fundamental ones. And then it derives um, explanations about the rest from those statements taken as fundamental. So this is a very powerful switch and it can achieve a number of very interesting things all in one go just because you change the model explanation. We can capture phenomena that with the traditional conception we could only capture in approximative ways. So these are uh, phenomena related to information, phenomena related to uh, life, so regularities that underlie production and organization of information within biological systems and phenomena that have to do with uh, work and heat. And then uh, another thing can happen. There is this problem that uh, we don't have yet a unique proposal for a successor for both quantum theory and general relativity because these two theories that are the most fundamentals we have at the moment clash with each other. And there are some regimes where experimentally uh, both are important, but because they clash, um, we need a, a, a different theory that merges both to, to be able to make predictions. So the principles of constructive theory are very useful in these regimes because given that they don't rely on a specific dynamical law, allow you to still make predictions and explain what's going on. This is very promising because it can allow us to design new experimental demonstrations that uh, we wouldn't otherwise be able to conceive of. And the, the bet that we are now trying to win in a way is to um, make progress in some of these areas where the traditional approach doesn't quite work 
by using this uh, different radical uh, switch that constructive theory has in formulating the laws of physics. And if that works, then, uh, you know, this is a, a great step forward because we have a whole new array of tools that we can use in order to understand physics and physical reality.